It turns out that the Holbrook lathes like to use a 9 16th Acme thread for their cross slides. This isn't a standard size, as became evident when one of the chaps on the owner's mailing list tried to find a tap to make a new cross slide not for his 9050s T13. I decided that it would be fun to make it up, as it gives me an excuse to play around with the external offsets in Linux CNC. The Acme standard is a 29 degree tra trapezoidal form. Curiously, that means a half angle of 14 and a half degrees, which is the same as the most popular gear pressure angle back in the day. I wonder if there is some theoretical link. A tap is rather more than just a screw thread of the desired form with some chip grooves cut into it. The outer circumference is not circular, as can be seen by comparing this drawing to the dotted true circle. Not only is the outer perimeter non-circular, but the thread form also needs to, to be relieved to give side relief. The first thing to do was to make a 29 degree threading tool. You can buy carbide inserts, but I had a feeling that I would need more than the usual amount of tool relief to cut the relief on the tap. I ground the tool out of the end of a broken HSS M6 tap. This turned out to have a quarter inch shank, matching one of the collets of my newly acquired cutter grinder. The cutter grinder is so new that I don't yet have a VFD or single phase motor for it, so it's running on a, on a single phase and a capacitor, which is why I have to pull on the belt to start it. One of the harder aspects of this was getting the correct width of the tool. Here you see me squinting through a loop to make sure that my micrometer is measuring at the exact tip of the tool. As I mentioned in the introduction, one of the more interesting aspects of making a tap is that they are not circular. That would normally mean that you can't make them on a conventional lathe, but my lathe is controlled by software, and so it isn't conventional. The next thing he has a feature called external offsets that some of us have been having great fun with recently. If I remember, I will put a link up to the, to the video of another Linux CNC user who is milling non-circular holes with a boring bar, including a spiral hexagonal hole. I have set up my machine to apply a small amplitude full load sinusoidal offset to the tool radius. This creates the back relief required in the tap. The areas of negative relief will be cut away when the flutes are machined. The screw thread also needs to be relieved in the same way as the circumference, so the custom ground tool is being used here in a conventional threading cycle. One handy thing about the external offset function is that it is entirely separate from the G-code, so an ordinary G76 command was all that was required. Because the spindle speed has to be set very low for the cross slide to follow the rotation, this part of the process took a very long time. An hour and a half for all the shallow passes needed with the long slender workpiece. A travelling steady isn't really an option when the work is not round. Here we see the machining of injury taper. Point of faction, I should have done this at the same time as the relief turning. The rotary table on my mill has the same nose as the lathe, so I can carry the worker and chuck across together.
Here I am finding the largest diameter point of the tap in order to work out where the flute belongs. And here I am belatedly realising that the very nice Bernard chuck doesn't give me cut access to the end of the flutes, so I change over to an ER20 collet tool holder instead. And finally we can machine the flutes. And after all the machining, what we have looks astonishingly like a tap. So I've buried the tap in borax using the click spring, click spring trick to try to avoid it uh, getting too much scale on it. And then I'm going to heat treat in this tube furnace that I've made. I've got a Lumina tube and some Nichrome wire that I happen to have. I don't know where, I think I found it in a skip. Um, and then to hold the quenching, I'm going to quench in oil first, but I'm not sure that's the right way to go. I've made like this big toothpaste tube to hold the oil. One thing I hadn't considered with the click spring borax trick is that it's made sticky with meths which burns off when you put it in the furnace. You don't notice that when you're using flame hardening. And after the specified soak time we're back for the heat treatment.
I sharpened the flutes using a diamond wheel and mounted in my milling machine high speed head using the same setup as I've previously shown for sharpening uh, halbers. The difference being here that I've added uh, a safety guard, a 3D printed one, which is probably of purely psychological value but nevertheless does make the thing a little less scary to be around. And now it's time to start to do the, do the final sh sharpening of the tape to section of the top. To this end I've made a special collet, 3D printed, for the grinder, with a flower shaped end so I can grip the tap on its flutes. Doing this on camera is going to be difficult, but I'll say this. Tap fits in there. Gets grouped by the flutes. I'm rather at the limits of what this little grinder can do when it comes to sharpening the tapered section of the tap, but I managed to make it work in the end. The proof of the tap, of course, lies in the tapping. I don't have a tap wrench big enough for this tap. I already started this early before I finished sharpening it. 